Hi, this is Gary LaRue, the technical editor of Microwave Journal, and I'm here with James Klein, who's the president of Corvo's infrastructure and defense business, as well as Eric Hyam, who is the director of, of advanced semiconductor applications at Strategy Analytics. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Eric, let's start with the defense market, if we could, and get your market perspective. If we look at the world, it seems to be very unsettled today. We have ISIS in the Middle East, this Iran nuclear deal, China's investing in their military, the Obama administration is in its last years, at least up here in New England. The presidential election has already started for uh, 2016, and amidst all that noise and chaos, what's the outlook for the RF microwave industry? Well, I think the, the uncertainty in this case, I think, is going to create some opportunity. As long as you believe that there still is a threat, and I think there is, then uh, we need to be aware of that and we need to be guarding against that. And so what, what we are thinking is that despite the uncertainty in the defense budget, more and more of those defense dollars will be going to electronic systems. And more and more of those electronic systems will be containing semiconductors, compound semiconductors, gallium nitride. Uh, so we're, we're pretty bullish and I think uh, we're seeing some sections of, of those markets take off pretty quickly now. Is that kind of what you're seeing, James, at Corvo? And how do you think you're positioned for this time? I mean, absolutely. We still see those trends of going to more advanced systems. We see AESA radars continue to proliferate. We see advanced comm systems that are pushing power levels and frequency bandwidths. And so all of those are, are great trends for us in the RF industry. And of course, I think we're positioned very well. We've been in this business for a long time. Uh, uh, we're a market leader in several parts of the defense business and, and certainly well positioned with new technologies like GAN that we think will play a big role in, in, uh, in the defense growth. Absolutely. So if we switch now to the commercial market, ever since the sort of coming out of the recession, the Great Recession of 2008, I think the mobile market has pretty much been on fire and people are, you know, adopting smartphones globally. The bandwidth demand is, is increasing, I think, for the most part. The infrastructure market has grown as well with maybe a couple dips in that time period, currently in China perhaps. But how do you see the, the infrastructure market from that perspective, Eric, both looking at wireless as well as maybe some of the other ancillary segments? Well, again, it looks like that's a market segment that is poised for some growth. You, you hit on some of the, uh, the real key drivers in your intro. LTE is, is becoming global and LTE has been a very big adopter of GAN, uh, along with other solid state technologies. The big driver for the whole industry is data traffic and data consumption, and uh, bandwidth is a limited resource, so the uh, equipment manufacturers and companies like Corvo are finding clever ways of squeezing more data into an existing resource. So you've got things like carrier aggregation and MIMO, and going to higher frequencies where there is more bandwidth. So I think those will all be very good for the compound semi industry. Uh, so we're looking at some growth in the upper single digits for the entire market, but uh, uh, the good times are not passed by any means. And do you see the IoT, the Internet of Things, as it's been called, benefiting the compound semiconductor market as well? Well, that's an interesting question, and I think that remains to be seen. A, a lot of the IoT applications uh, look to be low data rate. And so you have to question, are they those compound semiconductor plays or are they silicon plays? But uh, the IoT also includes things like Wi-Fi and handsets, anything really that connects to the internet uh, wirelessly. And so we know that there's a lot of compound semiconductor content and growing uh, in things like, like mobile handsets and and Wi-Fi. So James, how are you positioning your IDP business to take advantage of these trends in the infrastructure side? Well, I mean, uh, certainly I want to uh, reiterate what Eric said. We do see that mobile side of the business growing in that 10 to 15 percent range, and we think we're positioned very well, and that will continue. On my side of the business, uh, uh, I also agree with Eric. We're seeing a high double digit or high single digit kind of growth rates, and we're positioned in some really great core markets. Uh, defense has been one of those. Uh, our optical market, uh, we've got a great new set of products coming out there. Uh, Wi-Fi as well, we've got some high performance 5 gigahertz PAs that are positioning us for growth in that market. And so we continue to do multiple different things and including moving up the value chain a bit. We acquired a, a Spatium technology a couple of years ago that is really targeted towards high power PAs. 
and that business is doing very well, very well for us. So. Do you see any gaps as you look at, at these markets in terms of what you're able to play into, if it's attractive? I think today we're positioned pretty well. I don't see us having significant gaps. We continue to increase our investments in new technology. We're doing more and more in silicon, which I also think is a little bit new for us on the IDP side as we start to put silicon um, in some of our uh, optical drivers as an example or as we move into the receive side of optical. So we continue to, to do more in GAN and there's a lot to be done there and we continue to do some more in silicon and on top of our normal uh, gallium arsenide uh, ba based products. So let's talk a little bit more about GAN because obviously it's a it's a key focus area for Corvo. Eric, what's your view of the GAN market and its growth now, both defense as well as commercial? Yeah, I think it's a very exciting time for GAN. The defense industry has really nurtured the technology and, and that's been for some time now and, and that's really taken care of a lot of the fundamental process and product and development. But the exciting thing there is that I think we're starting to see things go into production now. Uh, so we're anticipating stronger growth on the military side than we are on the commercial side. And we, we track pretty closely communications, EW, and the radar segments. And we're looking at all three of those for GAN growing in excess of 20% yearly, mm. uh, with the overall market growing by about 28%. Commercial side, uh, the exciting thing there is that it appears commercial applications are finally getting traction. Uh, for so long, that was sort of the uh, oasis shimmering on the horizon, and we never quite got there. But I think led by some efforts early with uh, RFMD, now, now part of Corvo, on the cable TV side, uh, that became a big commercial adopter. And now the base station market is the largest uh, user of GAN. Uh, between the two cable TV and base stations, uh, in 2014, we, had, we accounted for about 95% of the GAN revenue on the commercial side. So we're looking at that growing as well, mm -hmm. not quite as quickly as the defense market, but, but still good growth. Uh, so an overall market growth, including both segments of approaching 20%. So uh, exciting times, I think, in GAN. So if I look at strategy analytics data, they clearly put Corvo number one in GAN in the defense market. And overall, I think they have you tied for number two. How do you grow your share, at least on the commercial side? You may not need to grow for more share on the defense <laughs> side, but on the commercial side, what, how do you grow your share there? Well, again, for us, it's always about new great products, right? And uh, so cable TV, we were very early in the market, and we continue to re release product there. And Doxis 3.1 is coming, and we'll, we have products that are out in demonstration level at that now, so that'll help us continue to drive. And then base station power is where we've been making our largest investment. So we've got a great set of products that are, that are out there now being sampled and evaluated that, that cover many frequency bands and power levels. And, and we think the market's right there. It's a great time as we see frequency bandwidths increasing, and we see center frequencies moving up higher and higher. It's, it's a great time for the technology. So I think that'll be the centerpiece of our growth. And what kind of feedback are you getting from customers when they look at your GAN parts for infrastructure for base station? Well, certainly what they see is improved efficiency over traditional technologies, and that's really the driver today, right, is to be able to right. get higher efficiency and certainly able to support those frequencies maybe above 2.5 gigahertz uh, where it has a substantial advantage. But as we do go things like carry aggregation and the bandwidth start to increase, mm -hmm. uh, GAN plays a, a bigger and bigger role. So we're getting great feedback from the customers. So over the past several years, we've seen a lot of consolidation in the semiconductor industry and RFMD and Triquint being a good example of that. And it doesn't seem like it's going to slow down. Eric, as you look at the industry and, and the consolidation that's taking place, how do you think Corvo is positioned? Well, it was one of those situations where uh, I hadn't really heard any rumblings ahead of time, but once it happened, it made perfect sense. You look at it and you said, why didn't I see that coming? Because both companies have, have very complementary strengths and not a lot of overlap. Uh, they both have handset organizations, so that really helps from the uh, scale side because that, that's really a business of scale. On the, on the IDP side in particular, uh, the, the strengths really seem to be complementary. You had RFMD, one of the early users of GAN, and, and they had a lot of success with GAN and cable TV. And the Triquin side of things had a long heritage with the government agencies and getting funding to develop the processes and, and really mature the technology. Uh, they both were strong in base stations. Uh, they both have activities in point-to-point -point radio and things like that. So very, very complementary. And uh, uh, it, it just seems like 
the strength of the combined companies will really be more than the individual companies. And I assume you don't disagree with that? No, absolutely. It's been, it's been a great ride. The uh, company's doing very well. We've uh, committed to some synergies, and I think we're on a great path to go do that. We continue to grow, and it's been a, it's been a great merger. And as you know, we've been pretty public. We continue to look uh, for ways to continue to consolidate the market. So um, we're actively looking uh, for targets that fit inside IDP particular and, and match our strategy. So I think it'll continue to go on. Well, we'll be following the news to see what <laughs> announcements you're ready to make there. <laughs> thank you both for spending time with us and sharing your views of the market and, and the company. Hey, thank you. Thank yeah. you for having me. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it.